loss of control in a trike. What you're witnessing here is loss of control at low altitude during climb out. This is actually a very common uh, fatal accident in many cases because it has the velocity to impact the ground uh, very, very hard. If this was somebody that uh, had no experience in weight shift control that decided he would give it a go in his friend's trike. He was a fixed wing pilot and uh, this is exactly what we can expect to see when somebody who's untrained in weight shift control gives it a go for the first time with no instruction. Without any pilot input, there is a very high chance that the trike will start into a spiral dive, either left or right. In many cases, it can be attributed to P-factor forces, uh, could be some wind shear, but when the nose is up and the aircraft starts to roll into a bank, if the pilot allows the turn to develop, um, when you enter a turn with the nose up, you can expect to exit the turn with the nose down. What you're watching now is a trike that took off with the controls tied to the front strut. And so the pilot had zero ability to be able to do any kind of control inputs to the aircraft on takeoff. So what you're really looking at is the aircraft's natural ability to take off on its own without pilot input. It's not like it'll just climb away wings level. It definitely requires some input, and when input is not given, this is what the aircraft would actually do. Now granted, the control bar is tied forward, and uh, there may be a stall involved, but this is a very natural tendency for the aircraft. It needs to be flown. Now here we have a trike purposefully being put into that same attitude, but effortlessly being flown out of that attitude. And with proper technique, the altitude is not an issue. The recovery is instantaneous. The aircraft does not have to continue towards the ground. This is recoverable right here, right now. What we're looking at here is actual student training. Obviously, we're up much higher, but the technique's exactly the same. And remember, the aircraft doesn't know if you're one foot or a thousand feet up in the air or higher. It's all the same technique, and it is a very quick recovery when done properly. And now he has his recovery hand in his lap, and things are going to go bad really quick. And you see he reached up with that left hand. The actual recovery is high hand to hip. In this case, that would be the left hand towards the left hip to recover. Here you can see what's demonstrated is high hand to hip with just one hand on the controls. You must pull the high hand towards the hip and you'll have instantaneous recovery. Here we're looking at a pretty well-known video. This is a real life situation. This is not intended. The pilot in the front seat lost control of the aircraft and you can see he's trying to push the low wing up, which does not work. Uh, the pilot in the back seat grabs the controls. Now he's using both hands, but really it's his left hand that came back towards his left hip, which levels the wings that saved the day. So another super common uh, attempt to escape a spiral is to push the bar forward. And uh, pushing forward will generally wind it into the ground even quicker, but more importantly, it can induce a stall and that stall will generally happen on the low wing, uh, making the uh, problem a whole lot worse. And so you can see that they're actually practicing, and um, Wes Fry is showing what not to do when exiting the spiral. And again, in this case, spiraling to the left, he's using his right hand to recover, right hand to hip. Here I am in a full throttle climb, full throttle, letting it do its thing. And with the nose up, sure enough, right into a corkscrew spiral dive and reduce power. And it actually righted itself. I would not count on that happening every time. Staying square in your seat in all flight attitudes is extremely important. So here's an example of the authority that you lose even when you're pulling high hand. We're trying to pull the right wing down with our right hand. And you can see the aircraft barely wants to roll in. Now by contrast, sitting square in the seat, pull in, a lot more authority. So leaning 
towards the high wing can absolutely be the deciding factor of how fast or if you can get out of spiral at all. You notice just that high hand onto the front flying wires, very, very effective, and uh, you can see how little force it takes, but it is a high hand towards the hip. Now what I'm going to do is combine two huge mistakes, leaning away from the ground, a very natural human tendency, and trying to use the low hand. You could see how ineffective it was. It did actually work, but very, very slow to work in this case, which is a huge problem if this is happening low to the ground. More importantly, using poor technique will not work 100% of the time. And now by comparison, using high hand to hip, you can watch the rapid recovery of that spiral. And don't forget, just a 90 degree rotation even is a spiral. You don't have to go around and around and around. It's the same maneuver with the same recovery. Okay, so now we have reasons for the spiral. The trike banks with the nose up. The trike banks too steeply without enough airspeed. The pilot is not watching the horizon or the pilot is doing the maneuver on purpose. Now the reason for not recovering could be the pilot's not even aware that they're in a spiral, the pilot's using the low hand to recover, pilot pushes forward, pilot adds or stays in the throttle, or the pilot leans away from the ground, which is very, very common. So what's recommended? Well, if you're not proficient in spiral recovery, find an instructor who can give you this training. For a more detailed look at aerodynamics and spiral recovery steps, please see our other videos on our YouTube channel. Fly safe!